We're going to take a look at another uh, style of Poisson distribution question. Okay, and um, we're thinking about the sum of independent events. So if you've got two different events that both follow a Poisson distribution, you could think about what's the probability of the total of events between the two distributions. In this example, we're thinking about the sale of tea and coffee um, at Sue and Cafe. And we know that T follows a Poisson distribution with an average of 4.5 per 20 minutes. Coffee has got an average of 3 per 20 minutes. So T would follow a Poisson with an average of 4.5. Coffee would follow a Poisson with an average of 3. Okay, and what we're asked is find the probability that they sell a total of eight hot drinks in 20 minutes. So when this happens, or if this does happen, the total will follow a plus on. So we're expecting to sell three coffees and four and a half teas. We can just add them. So the total would follow a plus on with an average of 7.5. And I would write that down, like you're thinking about, because most of what we're going to be doing is on the calculator for this topic. You want to write that down because it, it'll give you one mark just for writing that down. Like you're telling the, the examiner, I understand that the mean in this question is 7.5. Because some of the exam questions, which you'll see later, the, the mean will change throughout. And like you've got to make sure you're using the right mean as you go. And also you, you get a mark for writing that down as well. Okay. So we're going to total... Equal to eight. So let's go menu statistics distribution plus on F1 because it's equal to total equal to eight. The mean for this question is 7.5, and that would give us 0 0.13732. So 0 0.1373. Okay, so the next one says total of more than 15 in an hour. We've got to be really careful here. So if this happens, if you change the time period, we can adjust. So we're expecting total is 7.5 per 20 minutes. So if we wanted an hour, which is 60 minutes, we'd have to just multiply by 3. Okay, which will give us 22.5. So I would now say the total follows a Poisson with 22.5. Again, write that down and then you can think about the question. So the total has got to be more than 15. Okay, so if you think about your number line. They could sell none. I don't write the full number line out because obviously there's like an infinite number of possibilities. But if a number's mentioned in the question, I would just write down the, the one less, one more, and the number itself. You know, all the way up to infinity coffees. So from zero to infinity, we want more than 15. So more than 15 would be 16 or above. Okay. Think about it using the method that I showed in the last one. We know that they all add up to one. So if we want more than 15, that would be one minus. Because we want 16 or above, we can get rid of less than or equal to 15. Okay, so if we get rid of less than or equal to 15, that would leave us with more than 15, 15 or above. So if you go into distribution, plus on cumulative, lower would be zero, upper would be 15. The mean for this one is 22.5. And that gives us 0 0.0. .0. Six, three, four, 
1. So if we do 1 minus this, that would give us 0 0.9. 366. Don't forget there is another way of doing it, but you don't, you're not showing this method. So I, I would like us to show the method another way of doing it just to get the answer straight away. If you wanted more than 15, your lower would be 16 and your upper would just be like a really big number. And then that gives you the same answer, 0 0.93658. So we can round to 66. Okay, so now we're thinking about more than 20, but less than 30. We're still in an hour, so the total in follow up class on 22.5, within one hour, okay? More than 20, less than 30, we want to include these values so more than 20 would be 21 less than 30 would be 29 so we want some way of adding up all of these probabilities between 21 and 29 again think about the mark scheme and showing your method before we just do the quick way that would be the probability of it being less than or equal to 29 minus the probability of it being less than or equal to 20. So this is what the mark scheme would look like if we get, if you want to get a question like this. So less than or equal to 29, lower zero, upper 29. So let's give us 0 0.925. Two five eight less than or equal to twenty would be zero point three four seven four three nine six six so four zero. If we subtract those, we get zero point five seven seven eight. Remember the, tr the, the sort of the quick way of doing it on this calculator, though, that will will not give us the method mark, but it will give us the answer. If we just go on to distribution plus on cumulative, if we want more than twenty, less than thirty, lower would be twenty one. Upper would be th um, not thirty, sorry, less than thirty. So upper would be twenty nine. And that just spits out the answer, 0 0.5778. Okay. Okay, the last two questions um, is more of just about the actual nature of the platform distribution, not the calculations. So it's a state and assumption that you've made about sales of tea and coffee. Now, if you get asked for an assumption statistics, go back and read the question and think about what we've been told. Anything that we have been told, we don't need to assume, but maybe something we've not been told. Okay, so it tells us in the question, it said the sales of tea and coffee follow a plasma distribution. But because we're thinking about two different ones and we were thinking about the total, the clues in the title, the, the two events, if you're going to combine them together, they've got to be independent for, the, for us to be able to do this. And we weren't told in the question, we weren't told that they were independent. So, sales of tea. And coffee are independent. Okay. Um, essentially, what that means is that they don't affect each other. Like the, you know, the, the the average the number of coffee sales doesn't affect the number of tea sales. Okay. Maybe in real life they wouldn't be independent, but for us to be able to answer this question, we do have to assume that they are independent. And then it says, would the plasma be valid for the sales of coffee throughout the whole day? 
So when we get a question like this, just think Riffle. Okay, so is it random? Is it independent? Is it a constant average rate? And is it limitless? Because for a Poisson to be valid within the context, you've got to think Riffle. Um, and there's probably an argument for quite a few of these in, in real life as to like why it wouldn't really be valid. Like, <clears throat> would coffee sales be independent? Or well, maybe if someone turns up with the friend and, and they both buy a coffee together, or one person influences someone else, it's not independent, is it? Um, maybe not random. Like, there might be like a promotion on coffee sales, or you know, it, it could be like certain times of the day where more coffee is sold. Um, is is the sale of coffee limitless? Now you've got to be careful with limitless. There's and there's not very many exam style questions where you you've got to say oh it's not limitless because technically you could get like a hundred people who wanted the coffee. The probability of that would be really small, so we don't need to worry about limitless. Like the one that sort of stands out to me, that the way the question's worded, it says throughout the whole day. So is there a constant average rate? I'm going to use this one. Okay, so I would say. No, as not constant average rate. Yeah, you know, you'd expect more sales of coffee in the morning. Okay, thanks guys.